Welcome folks, Jason Hoppy here to show you how to create a herringbone pattern in Illustrator. I'm going to start with my rectangle tool. I'm going to click on my document, call up the dialog box. I'm going to make this rectangle a width of 50 and a height of 150 and click OK. I've added a 10 point stroke around that to give it some heft. Now I'd like to duplicate this shape by holding down the Option key and Option or Alt, click and drag. Hold Shift to rotate this so it snaps to 90 degrees. And I'm going to align these so that the corners line up thanks to my smart objects. Now a herringbone pattern is basically a duplication of this multiple times with this cool kind of woven effect. But I'm going to show you a slightly different way of how we can create this. I'm going to select my vertical shape. Go into the Effect menu, Distort and Transform, Transform. Make sure your preview is turned on, and I'm going to set the number of copies to 1 so we can see what's actually happening. I'm going to set my horizontal here at 50, and you can either type in 50, because that's the width of my shape, or you can use your up arrow. I like to hold shift and up arrow, and that's going to increase it in increments of 10. So I'm going to offset this 50 over and 50 down, and then I'm going to go in and set the number of copies that I'd like to have, say 13. Click OK. Let's zoom back out and we can see that we now have this duplicated set of 13 of these items. I'm going to repeat the process with a horizontal one. Effect, Distort, Transform, Transform. Make sure I set the number of copies here. And then also offset that 50 and offset this 50 as well. And then increase the number of copies that I'd like to have. Great. Now, if we go into the View menu, you'll notice that when we go into Outline, you only see the outlines of the first two. And the reason why is because this is an effect that we've applied to this. These aren't real. It's just giving the effect that it's real. So to make those real, I'm going to select the Original Shapes, Object, and Expand Appearance. Expanding the appearance is saying, whatever you see on screen, let's expand it so that it actually really is those shapes and not really just an effect. You can now see we have those shapes when we go under our view menu and we rotate or we see the um, outline. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this entire set of shapes here and I would like to duplicate this again using my distort transform. And I'm going to set the number of copies to one, of course. And the vertical, I'm going to go and I'm going to move up here. So I'm going to use my shift and I'm going to move that up. And I'm going to move this over. So we can get this all lined up here. And I need to make this 150. So you can see that we've just moved it all over the entire width and the height of my object. And then set the number of copies of the herringbone that you'd like to have. So I'm going to say five copies and click OK. And there's my entire herringbone pattern. Now, we just have the original set because, again, this is all an effect. So let's select everything expand the appearance, and now we have my herringbone shape. I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees, and I'm going to turn this into a pattern so that I can put it into my swatches panel and fill anything with this herringbone, no matter what size or shape. So I'm going to select my content, go into the Window menu, go under Pattern Options. The Patterns panel is grayed out. You click on the cheese grater, and with my selected object, I'm going to choose Make Pattern. And it says it's been added to my swatches panel. And then I'm going to make changes in my actual pattern option panel. Now, when we see this pattern here, what we have is the blue bounding box, which is where our pattern is defined. So I select everything in here. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to increase the width of this. So and you can see when I increase and decrease the width, this helps me fit this together so that I don't get any of these gaps. Now, because I've gone in and I've made this an exact size instead of just some random shape, I should be getting numbers that are going to not be some weird number with decimal points here, but I set my width here, and you can see that it now lines up nicely. I'm going to go in and I'm going to set my height as well, and I'm going to hold down my shift key and use my down arrow, and I'm going to snap those all together. So now you'll notice that my pattern comes together beautifully inside my pattern. 
Now, when I'm done with this, I simply click done. I don't have to choose save a copy. Saving a copy is going to save yet an additional copy to this. Patterns work kind of weird. When you create the pattern, it automatically puts it into your swatches panel. And any edits that you do to it automatically get updated. And when you're done with your updating, you just simply click done. And then it shows up in your swatches panel right there. So how does this work? Let's check this out. I'm going to draw a shape and I'm going to fill it with my pattern, go into my swatches pattern. And there is my herringbone pattern that I created and I fill it and there it is. So this is a really cool way to go in and kind of create this woven texture here, but just in a different way. Again, it's the simplest things in Illustrator that you'll learn how to do that make it really fun and really interesting. So give it a shot.